What's up everybody? I got a very special video today. This is another vacuum video. This is on my latest eBay purchase. This here is my vintage, very vintage, Rainbow D3C from, I believe it's from the early to mid 80s, but it's kind of hard to date these rainbows, but Anyway, judging from all the all the info I read online, these D3s came out somewhere in the early 80s. But anyway, I have always wanted a rainbow. My grandparents had one years ago when I was probably in elementary school back then. And it was a great machine. I've used it a few times and I was absolutely in love with the thing. It was very powerful. The performance was excellent, but there were a small bit of things wrong with it. If I can remember correctly, theirs had a missing ground on the end of the plug. And the the power brush did sound like it was about to die, which later on down the road it actually did. But thankfully the motor unit was still running. But then after it had gotten in the hands of of my uncle, he literally abused the thing and stored stored it with water still left in the basin even after he dumped it out there was still moisture in it and eventually it got up inside and tore up the motor although it was a very good machine i always dreamed of having that thing again and now i do now here's a funny story for how i got this like i said most all the stuff i bought was off ebay but I bought everything piece by piece. It did not come with this full kit that I got. So, unfortunately, I did spend a lot more than I could have if I would have bought it in a set. But anyway, I'm still very happy I got it. Because everything, the motor unit, water and water basin included, the the newer style D4 wheel caddy, the the electric hose and the and the power brush and the extension wand that connects to it. And I also bought a full attachment kit for it and the separate non-electric hose. And I will go through all of it those features later in the video. But for starters, let's go ahead and take a look down at the motor unit. It is overall in very nice condition. There are a little bit of scratches up there at the top for the rainbow emblem. And the cord has definitely seen better days. And I do have a replacement. I've just neglected to put it on. You can see in the back here, there's where your power switch is. And one thing I've learned about, about this, rain, this rainbow, this smoke cap does come off where you could hook up your hose into the back and use it as a blower but I've not seen many people do that and I don't really do it as much so I just like to leave that cap there in place and like I said it does have the newer D4 style wheel caddy I I couldn't find an original D3 or early D4 wheel caddy that would have worked good and went great with being original and all but anyway i've always liked this particular style wheel caddy since the water basin is much more visible at the bottom than just seeing barely from the top you and take off the motor unit real quick see it, it completely detaches from the water basin by the and it's held on by those two latches hold on let me unhook that plug there but anyway there right here is the water separator it's specially designed so water doesn't go up into the motor and damage it and right down there is the model number i know it's kind of hard to see and the lighting is really not the best it says Rainbow Model D3C, manufactured by Rexair Incorporated from Cadillac, Michigan. The US, those three U.S. patents. Also look right down here. It's 120 volts AC or alternating current. 
25 to 60 hertz. It's a 5.9 amp suction motor. It says with the motorized nozzle, it increases it to 8.5 amps. So if you do the math, it's probably a 2.5 amp brush roll motor in the power brush. So anyway, right here is the water basin. One very nice thing about these rainbows is they actually take water as their filter. And it traps, as you're vacuuming, it traps all the dirt inside the water and virtually nothing escapes back into the air you breathe. It's one nice thing to have if you're, if you're not wanting to change out bags on a conventional vacuum every other time or empty out a dirty dustbin and a bagless. So technically this would be considered a bagless, but the emissions on it are much better than any bagless vacuum I've ever seen. So anyway, let's go ahead and set the motor unit down here and just latch it in place. You will notice there is a cord right here, which is connected right there. That's what drives the power brush. It runs all the way up to the top. And I did curve it around so it'll kind of hold on to the hose there. And it gets connected right here and then it runs up to the power brush. The hose is in very nice condition. However, there is a little mystery paint stain right there, which I don't know how that even got there. But it doesn't affect the the condition of the hose and it still seals pretty good but anyway let's go ahead and show you the power brush it is in very nice condition I was told that the seller of the the power brush installed a brand new belt right there is the carpet selector switch which this is basically just a suction release valve put it there for high pile carpet then medium and low. I always like to leave it low so that way it it gets all the suction necessary and kind of sucks it down to the carpet. Right here is a little brush roll indicator to let you know that your brush roll is working. Right there is a little reset button for if something were to get caught in the brush and it and it shuts off, you can just hit that reset button and it'll start working again. So anyway, let's go ahead and show you the underside of it. As you can see, I really love this, these older style rainbow power nozzles. They seem much more built than even the newer Performance Edition D4 power nozzle does or is. You got these small little wheels down here, metal bottom plate, but this does have a wooden roller brush roll. It does have soft bristles, but the thing I like about this is that it has the old school beater bars right here. So it beats and sweeps the carpet, which having these soft bristles, it definitely comes in handy having the beater bars because this thing deep cleans very well. So anyway, let's go ahead and put it back up. Also one nice thing on these is that the cord runs through this little plastic section right here so it doesn't wrap around the hose to give it a nice cleaner look. Anyways, let me go and show you the attachments real quick. Like I said right here is the separate non-electric hose. Your upholstery tool, dusting brush, crevice tool, bare floor tool. Right here's a secondary bare floor tool with this small little brush. Extension wand and a little tool that hooks into whatever floor head you want just hook it right there and twist it and it's locked in place twist it back and you can pull it out same basic principle applies for this twist it and it locks you do that and pull it out and overall I think I've pretty much go gone over pretty much all the features and now comes the fun part. We'll go ahead and give this thing a run. But before I do that, let's go ahead and take the motor unit back off. Set that to the side. Let's go ahead and unhook the 
hose here for a second. Just held on there pretty tightly, which is very nice. And we'll go ahead and take the water basin over to my sink. And we'll go ahead and Yeah, that should be good. Oh, we'll set it right here. Bring this over here. It's gonna be kind of hard to do. It's always best if it if you take the basin off of the wheel caddy, but then you just slowly start filling it up with water. Whoops. I'm going to clean that up later. It's always best to do it when the water hits to that to that top section right there. Now I'm going to have to cut away and clean up some of the mess I just made. All right. Now that that's done, I don't recommend doing what I just did, but because it's hard to do that and work the camera at the same time but once it's all done you can pretty much just set your motor unit back on the t on latch it in place now we'll look at the head and release the cord and just simply plug it in Before I do anything else, let's don't forget to hook up the hose. First, I'll go ahead and show you a little demo of it running. You will not believe how amazing this thing runs for how old it is. See the water around there? very very quiet machine it does get a little bit noisy when you hook up the power head and stuff but for the most part this thing runs exceptionally smooth so now let's go ahead and get everything into position the power head there all right now that everything is positioned let's go ahead and give you a little demo of this machine working To let you know that the power knob is working. And it is very quiet too. I think this might have had a new motor put in it sometime. They are known to get very noisy once they age. Beautiful machine. And take the 
this off and show you the the other tools over here with the non-electric hose that hooks up in like so and you can use all of your onboard tools and switch it on how good the suction is not really the highest but it does work pretty decently I'm going for a little crevice or excuse me a upholstery tool one thing i do like is that there's these little suction holes right on the back here so it the upholstery tool won't stick to whatever furniture you're you're vacuuming and here's your dusting brush it does have a nice little rubber material on the end and it just hooks in And your crevice tool. Alright, now I'm going to show you the bare floor tools. And hook up your extension wand right here. Hook up the other wand right here. Then simply attach whatever head you want. Like I said, just line it up with those little notches right here. Insert and then twist, and it's locked in. And you can do whatever floor you you desire. Take this off and show you the other bare floor tool. Put that up. Let me take on some more of my bare floor. Let me even move the canister over just a bit. So you right over here. Sometimes that piece of the hose just like to get tangled up. I do like this one a little better since there's these little brushes on the back and it glides along the carpet and moves around any, anywhere you steer it. Switch that off. Alright. Oh, and one nice little feature on, on these rainbows. You could actually pop this little cap off basically for your exhaust. Where if you had this on, the exhaust will just vent around the sides of the top cap. But you can take that off and hook up your hose inside there. I know it's kind of hard to fit. Eventually locks in place and you can use it as a blower. Although it is not very strong. So I find that tool very useless because, so let's just set that back, oops, but that's just one neat little feature that Rainbow decided to include with their units, which is kind of funny to me. Now that on these machines, when you're done vacuuming, you can go put your tools up. Which normally, on some of these D3s, they do come with a little tool caddy that mounts up on the top there, but this one has been lost, so 
I usually just keep all the attachments in a little plastic bin and I do have an original owner's manual with it. But after that little run and demo with this, let's go and see what it picked up. Set that to the side so we... Look at that. That's just how good that these rainbows pick up. So what you do with this dirty water, mostly what people do is after they pick up whatever dirt they vacuumed with their rainbow is just dump all the dirty water right into a bathtub or in this case a toilet. You do want to make sure you get most of the water out as possible and simply just flush it away. Bye bye dirt. Then after that what I normally like to do is wipe inside and out of the water basin before I store the machine. Now it's kind of hard to do on camera but I'm going to cut away real quick and show you after it's dry. And then after you're done and the dirt looks mostly dry to you, you can simply just put your water basin back on the, the, the wheel caddy. And what, what I would recommend doing to gain much more longevity out of your, out of your rainbow is to store it with the motor unit off the water basin. Now why I recommend that is because even though I've completely wiped it clean, but most of the time all of the water that was just ran inside of it can actually evapor evaporate into moisture and when the motor unit's sitting on top where it has all the warm bearings and stuff, it can rust some of the motor parts. And you won't notice it at first, but until then, your motor finally dies and you have to go, go get a new machine. So that's basically my recommendation for storing your rainbow. But anyway, I hope you've all, all enjoyed this full review on my vintage rainbow D3C. Hope you've enjoyed it, and don't forget to like, rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.